Okay, so you want to get more power out of your laptop that might not be at the full power limit. What am I talking about here? So laptop GPUs are obviously power limited to a certain degree. You know, the bigger the laptop, the less power limited that it is. Unfortunately, those bigger laptops with their full power mobile GPUs can't really be altered to go beyond that without doing something called a shunt mod. And that is just like crazy stuff that involves a lot of hardware, software, hacking, whatever. But what you can do if you have a smaller laptop, for example, it can only run up to 100 watts and you want it to run at 140 watts because that's the true maximum. You can actually do do that without any hardware modifications thanks to NV Flash. So I'm updating this video for 2024 because it is a little bit different than the first time that I made this video where you had to use a modified version of NV Flash, which you might still have to do for older cards like the 3070, but I'm going to show you how to do it with just the regular version of NV Flash on 40 series cards. It's super easy. And I'm also going to show how to force your NVIDIA GPU to use the maximum graphics power that it's capable of and just set it there and anchor it there until it throttles. So that's also a possibility through a certain NVIDIA driver where some intern at NVIDIA goofed up and forgot to lock down the power slider for laptops on this certain driver. So I will show you that as well. I'm going to give a little preliminary warning here that this is a modification that could potentially harm your device. Like there's a small chance that you could break your laptop doing this. I'm going to go out on a whim here and say that it's pretty safe for most people, most laptops, but I just want you to be aware of the consequences. I don't take any responsibility responsibility if something happens and your laptop is messed up this is something that you'll need to decide to do and make sure that you're willing to take the risk the best thing i suggest is to look on reddit look on forums and see if anyone else has done this with their laptop that may be the same model as yours someone's got to be the guinea pig you know so if it worked for someone else it's more likely to work for you as well. Fortunately, I'm crazy and I love to be the guinea pig in these situations. So I have a Zephyrus G14 that goes up to 125 watts on the GPU on the RTX 4090 laptop GPU, which can theoretically go up to 175 watts on the bigger 16 inch and 18 inch devices that it's on. And you know what? I wanted to do that. I just wanted to see if a 14 inch laptop could hit 175 watts. Turns out it definitely can actually, which is crazy. But let's talk about how I made that happen. So enough of the warnings and all that let's just get straight into it i'm going to show you how to do this on your laptop how i did this on mine and how i beat the world record on time spy for any 14 inch laptop so like i said this is all possible due to a software called nv flash which allows you to flash the v bios or vga bios of another mobile gpu one with a higher wattage than yours this doesn't actually affect the bios of your machine it doesn't actually change the way your device works per se it only changes what your device perceives that your gpu is capable of of. Basically makes your laptop's GPU act more like the GPU of the laptop that you're flashing the vBIOS from. If your laptop has a hybrid mode, I must say that the uh, the chances of breaking it are a lot less likely because that way if something fails with your NVIDIA card, you always have your integrated graphics that it can fall back on. So just putting that out there, your chances of anything going wrong are much less likely if you have integrated graphics on your laptop. And let me elaborate just for a second because this could make or break someone breaking their laptop. What I mean by integrated graphics, so everyone has a hybrid mode or a DGPU mode on their laptop. Hopefully your laptop has a MUX switch so that you can access this or it has NVIDIA Advanced Optimus. So with Optimus enabled, you have both your integrated graphics and your NVIDIA GPU essentially working together. And if you have your MUX switch activated, it's only your NVIDIA GPU and your integrated graphics are completely disabled. So if something happens to your NVIDIA GPU, then there's nothing to push any anything to the screen. So it's important to do this while you're in optimist mode, just as a precaution. So if your laptop has a MUX switch, it's usually in the control center for your laptop. It's either called hybrid or optimist mode, depending on the laptop. And then if it has advanced Optimus, you're just going to want to make sure that you go into NVIDIA control panel, go to manage display mode and make sure it's on Optimus. And that should just about cover you. So we're going to start by going to techpowerup.com. This is the website that you can download NV Flash from. All you got to do is just go to downloads and find the latest version of NV flash. Simple as that. At the time of making this video, that was version 5.821. Once you've downloaded NV flash, just unzip the file. You can save it wherever you want. I usually just unzip it to documents so that it's not lost in my downloads folder. And so here you're going to have the NV flash 32 or 64 bit versions. Um, you know, most people are on a 64 bit version of windows. So that's probably going to be the one you're using for this example. I'm making an NV flash new folder because I already have one where I've been experimenting with different versions of NV flash and modified versions. So this one's just going to be like a clean start here. So you see, I have NV flash 32 and NV flash 64. I'm going to go ahead and drop the 175 watt scar 16 for 
4090 V BIOS that I'm going to run on my G14. The reason I know this is probably going to work because it's an Asus laptop. So you got to use a little bit of intuition here. If you match up the V BIOS with the brand of yours, it's much more likely to be perfectly compatible. I have an Asus 2023 laptop and I'm using the V BIOS from another 2023 Asus laptop, it's the same GPU. So I know it's going to be compatible. For example, if I had a 4080, I cannot load a 4090 V BIOS. And I realized I never covered how to search for a V BIOS in my last video, but the easiest way that I found to do so is actually just not even through Tech Power Up's website, but just through Google. So if you Google, I'm going to use my 4090 as an example here. If you Google 4090, you might have to play around with the keywords here, but laptop or mobile GPU, I'm going to try mobile GPU VGA BIOS, since that's what Tech Power Up calls it. And then we'll put Tech Power Up in here as well. And sure enough, you can see all these search results that are pulling up 4090 mobile, Dell 4090 mobile, Asus 4090 mobile. So you're getting a pretty good amount of options here. This way it kind of eliminates some of the desktop options that you get when you try to just search through Tech Power Up's website by itself. Um, again, you can change mobile to laptop. Um, that might help too. Or you can type the name brand. So if I want to type Alienware, now it's giving me a lot of Dell ones. You know, you can type, uh, type Razer. Here you go, Razer 4090. So this way, it's just a little easier to find it, I've found, just through Googling these specific keywords. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking for one. And then also definitely look it up on Reddit. See if someone, you know, say like Razer, VBIOS swap, and maybe sort by like past year, depending on how old your laptop is or how new. You know, use Google's tools to like help you narrow down and see what people have done so that hopefully you're not going into this blindly unless you're comfortable being the guinea pig for this situation. And before we actually do the code, one thing that people get tripped up on and they stumble over is that you have to actually disable virtualization within Windows before we do any of this. So that means, and it might be in your BIOS of your laptop, but you have to disable virtualization. So if you're on AMD, it's I think it's just called virtualization in your laptop's BIOS. So you may have to dig around and look for the virtualization setting and just disable that. It doesn't actually harm your computer to do that. Um, you may also have to disable core isolation in Windows Defender. Um, most people recommend disabling core isolation anyways because it used to have a performance impact. I'm not sure if it still does, but it's kind of a newer security setting. And I'm not going to try and be the security expert here and tell you that you don't need it, but I'm just going to say a lot of people disable it. So I can't be certain that it's the most critical security feature in Windows. And you can always re-enable it after you do this anyway. So, And also, before we get started, you're going to want to save a backup of your current vBIOS and keep it in the same folder that you have NVFlash in. You just download GPU-Z from Tech Power Up. Just hit the little share icon right here, and you'll have the option to upload your vBIOS to the data database or save it as a file on your computer. This is how you get your backup. And you're going to want to save that as backup.rom in the folder where you're putting NVFlash. Now, some laptops, for example, like the 2024 Zephyrus G14 are locked out of disabling virtualization. You can't do it in the BIOS. So one way around that you can also use NVFlash to get your ROM file. All you have to do is type NVFlash hyphen save equals backup.rom. And it's going to save it in the same folder that NVFlash is in. Okay, so now you have your original ROM file, you're backed up, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and do the vBIOS flash. I just renamed my NVFlash64, I just renamed it NVFlash. So that way it's just easier to type, I don't have to worry about doing the 64 underscore any of that stuff. So all you have to do is just type a couple lines of code and that's really it. And it's super easy. So open up a command prompt as admin and then you're going to type CD with a space and you're going to paste the address from File Explorer that NVFlash and the vBIOS are located in. So for me, that's just my documents mv flash folder and that basically just puts command prompt in that folder so now you can run files from command prompt in this folder so from there all you have to do is type nv flash because i just renamed my nv flash 64 to just nv flash so nv flash space two hyphens index equals zero hyphen six space and then you're going to type the file name for that vbios that you've downloaded for me i named it scar 164090.rom because it's just easy to remember and that's that and then from there you're going to hit enter uh, the screen is going to flash a couple times it's going to say reading eeprom um, it will take like maybe like 10 seconds or so it's going to tell you that the firmware image does not match yours which is fine because of course it's not going to match it's a different laptop so it's going to ask you to press y to confirm and that's really all you have to do. You just press Y to confirm. It's going to do a couple more calculations and then it's going to tell you that you're done and that a reboot is required to take effect. 
And that's that. So like I said, I recommend doing this in hybrid mode just in case. Um, go ahead and reboot your laptop. And then once you have it booted up, the easiest way to confirm is just open NVIDIA control panel, go to system information, and then scroll down to maximum graphics power. It should be a higher limit than what you had before. And now the next thing you're going to want to do is check your display outputs because a common side effect from using a vBIOS is that your display outputs are affected. So maybe your HDMI might not work on this vBIOS or maybe one of your USB-C outputs might not work on this vBIOS. So obviously see flashing back will restore any functionality that's lost. So say for example, your HDMI stops working, just flash back to the old vBIOS and it will restore the original functionality of your HDMI port. But yeah, when I flash a new vBIOS, I just like to make sure that the outputs are all correct. And um, sometimes it's just a matter of the laptop that you chose it from. For example, if I had used a Zephyrus M16 vBIOS, it might've behaved differently on the outputs than the SCAR16 vBIOS. But that's kind of just a trial and error thing. And if you're comfortable with trying different ones, you know, you can always do that. And then you'll just want to boot up a game to make sure that it's working. If you have a smaller, thinner laptop, it will likely thermal throttle with this new higher wattage limit. So just tune your settings in a way that makes sense for you. So for example, I'm on Cyberpunk here and 175 watts sounds great, but really in reality, that's not that practical. So I need to adjust my settings to compensate for this higher wattage. So I'm going to max my fan speed. I'm going to adjust my dynamic boost. I'm going to set my temperature target to a little bit higher. I'm going to set it to 86 um, just because because that's, you know, I, I recognize that I'm using a higher wattage. So I also need to be comfortable with those higher temperatures. And I'm just going to accept that. It's fine. Whatever. But you can see here in Cyberpunk, you know, sure, I'm on 175 watts, but hey, 135, 140 watts, I'll take it. You know, those are the thermal limits of my machine, unfortunately. You know, if I want to get more of that wattage potential, I can maybe lift the laptop a little bit. Again, max the fans out, use a cooling pad, things like that. But what if I want to force that maximum wattage? Well, luckily for us, there is a NVIDIA driver from Earth earlier in 2023 that allowed you to be able to adjust the power of your GPU. And it's only this driver, and I think maybe one or two around the same time, but this is like the most optimized one that came out. This is NVIDIA Game Ready Driver 528.49. So with this driver, all you got to do is just download and install it. And what this does is it unlocks the power slider and MSI afterburner. So with this power slider, it's going to be different numbers for everybody, but all you got to do is just pull a game up, slide that slider all the way to the right, and then hit the check mark to apply it and just watch as your wattage goes from, you know, maybe where it was dynamic boosting to its actual full boost amount without the CPU having to give up any wattage to get there. So this is a good and a bad thing because it's definitely going to push your laptop to its thermal limits. So you better be ready with like a cooling pad or something. Um, I found that cooling pads actually do help if you buy a good one. So maybe like if you're really trying to get the maximum performance, look into a cooling pad, something like that, and use this driver how you will. I'm just putting this information out there for people that love to push their machines to their limits. You know, I'm not saying I recommend this. I'm not saying that it's the best thing you can do for your laptop. I'm just saying if you're comfortable pushing your laptop to its limits, be my guest, like have fun, go crazy. And I'm glad I waited a little longer to put this video out because I found that a 2024 Asus laptop actually has a base TGP slider, which is basically identical to the NVIDIA slider that was taken away after that driver from like early 2023. So if you have a newer Asus laptop and you want to do this, well, you're in luck because because you can actually, for example, download the 175 watt SCAR18 vBIOS on your Zephyrus G16, which is what I did in my review. Definitely recommend checking that out. That's 125 watt GPU. I had it running 175 watts, but I have a base TGP slider. So I can actually adjust what the base GPU wattage is before dynamic boost. So even though I got 175 watts, I can run it at the stock 125 if I want to without having to flash back. Or I can run it at 150 or 155 or 100. 20 plus 25 watts dynamic boost if the CPU isn't working. So there's a lot more configuration all because of that one slider on new Asus laptops. So definitely recommend checking that out if this is something of interest to you. Another thing a lot of people bring up is, you know, what to do after they've done this. Like, oh, my temps are too hot. What, what can I do to uh, maximize my performance now that I have more wattage? Some things you can do, like a lot of times since CPU and GPU share heat pipes, you'll see the CPU and GPU both start to raise in temperatures. If you have an AMD machine, it might be worth it to limit your wattage because they're very efficient anyways. Like say you have a Ryzen 9 7940HS or 8845 HS, you can run that thing at like 15, 20 watts and be perfectly fine. A lot of people even just disable 
CPU boost entirely, which brings the CPU temperature down, leaving more headroom for the GPU, especially if you're running a higher VBIOS, this might prove to be useful. You can also do things like undervolting the CPU and setting a temperature limit. Software like Armory Crate or even G Helper, the alternative to Armory Crate really helps with that. These are sometimes things you can adjust in say like Lenovo Vantage or uh, Legion Toolkit. If your laptop doesn't have software that lets you do this, I highly recommend checking out UXTU. That one works with a lot of different CPUs and GPUs. So that one could come in handy for, again, limiting your CPU wattage, adjusting thermals to your liking. So there's a lot of possibilities, a lot of things you can do. But again, remember that there's only so much a laptop can do. If you have a 45 watt GPU and you're trying to make it run 140 watts, it's probably just not going to happen. So, you know, just keep that in mind. It's not going to be a miracle worker, but a lot of people can get some good use out of this if done correctly. And if you find your laptop's just not hitting that wattage limit that you wanted it to, it's probably just the thermals. I mean, to be honest, you can't stop a laptop from thermal throttling. So no matter what VBIOS you get, a lot of people are worried that, oh, it's going to make my laptop overheat. No, your laptop still has thermal throttling limits built into the machine that are going to take place no matter what wattage you're running at. So if that GPU is hitting 87 degrees, no matter what wattage, it's going to thermal throttle. Like it's going to go down to whatever the safest wattage it can maintain is. So same with your CPU. If the GPU is heating up so much that it's causing the CPU to heat up with it, the CPU is going to drop too. So just be aware of that. Maybe your laptop has thermal constraints that you're just not going to get around. And that's why I kind of recommend using multiple different ones. Uh, like the M16, for example, is 150 watt VBIOS. So that might actually be better for the Zephyrus G14, for example. So just something to keep in mind. And I said this in my last VBIOS video, and I'm going to say it again. Sometimes the best thing you can do with your gaming laptop is just turn off that overlay and enjoy you know just don't even think about the fps in that corner like just having that crap in the corner sometimes is what causes you to obsess over temperature wattage fps you know sometimes it's better to just sit back have fun don't worry about those things you know so that's just my two cents but i know a lot of people in this in the pc gaming scene obviously like to tweak things push things optimize things so i'm just putting this out there so that people have this information in a more organized guide so anyways i hope this was helpful. If you did find it helpful, please leave a like and hope you consider subscribing and let me know your experience in the comments below. Again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.